Good morning, good people, and thank you so much for joining us once again on another fresh edition of The Brief, live on my media prime television, a program where we always get to dig several layers beneath the major headlines as captured by newspapers. On today's edition of the program, the newspapers are focusing on uh, the sad incident in uh, Yaoundé where a woman reportedly butchered or uh, killed and butchered uh, her sister-in-law, her sister-in-law, for a money uh, ritual, as we are told. We shall tell you more. This edition of the program where the woman was promised 500 million francs CFA by a Facebook user that uh, she came in contact with, and many other uh, major headlines, especially the Anglophone crisis and what the bishops of the Bamenda Provincial e Ecclesiastical uh, Province have said in Buya after their one-week uh, meeting. They call on government to initiate another dialogue that will end uh, the conflict in uh, the northwest and southwest regions of the country. The bishops were, they were speaking in uh, Buya uh, shortly after the one-week uh, meeting that they held. And several other uh, decisions uh, were taken during the meeting by the bishops concerning the political life of the country as well as uh, the society, especially the northwest and uh, the southwest regions of uh, the country. Let's have the headlines in the French language newspapers with Gladys Bomoto Ngina. Gladys, uh, bonjour. Bonjour, la Chakensli. Bonjour à vous et merci de nous retrouver une fois de plus pour cette autre édition de Debrief, votre édition bilingue de revue de presse sur My Media Prime et Télévision. Alors ce matin, nous débutons avec le journal Le Jour. Le journal Le Jour qui nous parle des inscriptions sur les listes électorales en ce qui concerne les présidentielles de 2025. En effet, le journal Le Jour nous précise ce matin qu'il ne reste plus qu'une semaine pour s'inscrire sur les listes électorales. La révision annuelle donc commencée le 1er janvier s'achève donc ce 31 août. Euh, quel mobile quelle mobilisation pour cette dernière ligne droite. Les détails sont donc en page 2 et 3 du journal Le Jour ce matin. À sa page 5, le journal nous parle du contentieux électoral à la FECAFOOT. Samuel Eto reste donc le président de la FECAFOOT. Une sentence du TAS rendue publique hier. Les détails sont donc effectivement en page 3 du journal Le Jour ce matin. Mesdames, et Messieurs, nous poursuivons avec l'œil du Sahel. L'œil du Sahel nous parle en grand titre de la Damawa. La chicote de Jean Cueté à ses camarades indélicats. C'est du moins ce qu'a précisé le journal Le du Sahel ce matin en grand titre à sa page 3. En page 3, toujours, le journal nous parle d'une évasion spectaculaire à la prison de Ngaoundéry. En page 9, le journal nous parle de la grève des enseignants la maintenue du mine sec au syndicat. Nous restons toujours dans le journal L'œil du Sahel à sa page 12. Le journal nous parle du port autonome de Douala. 1365 milliards de francs CFA par an d'impact sur l'économie nationale. Mesdames, Messieurs, nous continuons ce matin avec le journal Réalité quotidien plus qui nous parle en grand titre de Tonga. Le collège Saint-Joseph accueille donc Monseigneur Paul Lanti Kene, évêque de Bafoussam. Les détails sont donc en page 2 et 3 du journal Le Quotidien Réalité Plus ce matin. À sa page 4 et 5, le journal nous parle d'union et un fou moutre d'assassinat et d'agression à Edom, seulement contre la famille euh, du feu Jeanne, de feu Jeanne Irène Bia. Dans un document exclusif parvenu à notre rédaction, on apprend qu'une bande d'individus armés de machettes et couteaux apparaissent, euh, décapitent des personnes et disparaissent dans la nature. Les détails sont donc en page 4 et 5 du journal le quotidien réalité plus ce matin. Nous continuons, mesdames, messieurs, avec le journal Émergence. Émergence quotidien parle en grand titre de la rentrée scolaire 2022-2023. Limite drastique des effectifs par salle de classe. En effet, le gouvernement a fixé le nombre d'élèves à 60 par classe. Les détails sont donc en page 3 du journal Émergence quotidien ce matin. À sa page 2, le journal nous parle de la filière bois au Cameroun. Pourquoi le démarrage du complexe 
de l'Aumier a été reporté. Les détails sont donc en page 2 du journal Émergence au quotidien ce matin. Nous clôturons, mesdames, messieurs, avec l'économie quotidienne. L'économie quotidienne nous parle en grand titre du docteur Albert Zé. Il faut donc mettre en place une riposte gouvernementale bien coordonnée. Économiste de la santé et fondateur de l'Institut de recherche pour la santé et de développement, il se prononce sur la décision de Manaouda Malachi, ministre de la Santé publique. Les détails sont donc en page 2 du journal L'économie quotidien ce matin. À sa page 3, le journal nous parle d'entretien routier, les propriétés de l'exercice 2023. Mesdames et Messieurs, voilà pour vos titres en langue française. Place à la découverte des titres en langue anglaise avec toi, Lacha Kinsley. Thank you, Gladys uh, Bomotongina. Let's kick start uh, this uh, morning with uh, the Herald Tribune uh, newspaper. The Herald Tribune newspaper this uh, morning is uh, taking us to Bamenda to talk about uh, what happened in Bamenda during the funeral of uh, uh, the mother of Territorial Administration Minister Paul Atanganji. Paul Atanganji, uh, who buried, uh, who was in Bamenda uh, yesterday to bury the mother. And during the funeral uh, mass that was organized uh, uh, in Bamenda, the Archbishop of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of uh, Bamenda, His Grace Andrew Nkia, Andrew Nkia tells uh, Yawundi, I'll tell you one day we need roots, uh, Archbishop Nkia. Those were his words to Minister Paul Atanganji, uh, according to the paper. His Grace Archbishop uh, Bamenda has told uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, to tell his hierarchy in uh, Yawunde that Bamenda, need, uh, or Bamenda needs uh, roots. I am confident they will hear uh, from you, the Archbishop continued. The Archbishop of the Metropolitan City of Bamenda made uh, the statement uh, during a funeral mass, like I earlier mentioned, to lay to rest the mother of the Minad boss, Paul Atanganji, uh, who passed on to glory. And uh, over there in Konsamba, nightclub attendant found dead under unclear circumstances. The 25-year-old lady is said to have died under mysterious circumstances in Konsamba, Mungo Division of the Littoral Region of uh, the country. Uh, Minchere Ationgono or Tiongong Jose said to be a witness uh, or, or waitress, rather a waitress at the nightclub, was discovered uh, dead in her bed uh, on uh, Saturday, August 20, 2022. Let's talk about uh, the meeting of the bishops, uh, bishops of uh, the Bamenda uh, Ecclesiastica province uh, who met in uh, Boya for over a week. Bishops repeat call for fresh dialogue to end anglophone crisis the bishops of uh, the abomenda provincial episcopal conference uh, have uh, held their 73rd meeting or ordinary meeting in Boya for close to a week. Like I earlier mentioned, the bishops reflected on the pastoral work and the challenges that uh, have affected the ecclesiastical province of Bamenda, which uh, consists of uh, the diocese of Bamenda, Boya, Kumbu, Manfe, and Kumba. More details on page 4 of this edition of the Herald Tribune News Paper. We take you to News Watch, News Watch newspaper this morning uh, to talk the armed conflict in the southwest region of the country. Investigations into Moja Moja's atrocities underway as uh, the paper tells us that uh, Moja Moja, who has decided to take the law into his hands by arresting uh, and torturing civilians in the name of fighting Ambazuna fighters, is under investigation after several uh, lawyers or lawyers uh, filed in complaints against uh, the said uh, traditional ruler who doubles as a uh, member of an elite or the elite unit of Cameroon's army, uh, the B. You can read more in this edition of Newswatch uh, News uh, Paper. And Newswatch is also telling us that the Minister of Public Health of Cameroon, Dr. Manauda Malashi, is under threat uh, for burning skin whitening products. The minister recently said uh, uh, he has received threats from uh, unknown individuals regarding uh, his decision or the decision he took to ban uh, some skin whitening uh, products as we are told. Let's talk about 2022-2023 academic year uh, break time over for 444 clandestine schools. We are told that two uh, weeks to the start of the 2022-2023 academic year, a cloud of uncertainty hangs over some 444 privately 
owned primary and secondary uh, institutions in six regions of uh, the country. The Adamawa Center is littoral south and west uh, regions that have uh, been uh, shut down for operating uh, clandestinely. In uh, separate decisions signed a couple of days ago by the Ministers of Basic Education, Professor Laurent Serge Etundi Ngoa and his peer of secondary education, Professor uh, Nalova Lyonga, uh, for faulting the defaulted uh, the institutions for opening illegally or operating illegally as uh, the paper tells us. We continue to talk more issues this time around as uh, promised by government to enforce decisions of the National Communication Council. The council has extended uh, sanctions on defiant journalists and untouchable media organs. More details in this edition of uh, Newswatch newspaper. On to the Guardian Post. The Guardian Post newspaper is uh, taking us to the United Arab Emirates to talk about uh, what happened there recently with a Cameroonian graduate turned laborer who has dropped dead at a construction site in uh, Dubai. The Cameroonian University graduate uh, Yongwu uh, Dennis Nche, 28 years old, is said to have dropped dead at a construction site in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and Che is said to have died in uh, the morning of Monday, August 22, under unclear uh, circumstances. More details in this edition of uh, the set newspaper. And uh, for what has been happening in uh, Kumba for some time now, we are told that uh, three suspects have been arrested. One of uh, the three suspects being an ambassador or ex-fighter and uh, he was arrested for implanting explosives in uh, Kumba. And the paper tells us further that the former Amazonia fighter Mukube uh, Bismarck, 21 years old, has been arrested alongside two others in Kumba, the main division of the southwest region of the country, for being at the origin of multiple explosives uncovered in the city of Bu or in the city of Kumba recently. Other members of uh, the gang are Toko uh, Rodolf, Toko Rudolf of 26 and uh, ex-convict and Ashu Robinson. Ashu is said to be a friend of Mukube as uh, we are told. You can read more on page 4 of this edition of uh, the uh, Guardian Post uh, news uh, paper. Let's talk about this horror in Yawundi where a woman has been arrested for allegedly killing butchering sister-in-law into pieces. The incident happened at the BMRC neighborhood in uh, Yaoundé, the political capital of uh, Cameroon. And on to uh, Womb Council Echoes. Womb Council Echoes this morning is uh, focusing on projects or so what the mayor of Womb Council has been doing for that, uh, uh, for that municipality. And uh, this uh, newspaper is dedicated to giving information about uh, the activities of Womb Council as we are told. And this morning, the paper is telling us how uh, the mayor has been sizing up, uh, uh, I mean, works and the stewardship of of the set council and the paper is also talking about mentioned senior divisional officer who has taken peace uh, message to womb residents in uh, that uh, part of uh, the country and equally we are told that persons living with disabilities in uh, womb uh, have embraced a keep clean campaign in womb the keep clean campaign in womb an initiative of uh, the mayor of uh, Wum, uh, Digambong, Digambong Anthony, as uh, the paper uh, tells us. Thank you for watching Televiewers on My Media Prime. We are back in the studio this morning to continue with our discussions. And uh, we are receiving two gentlemen uh, this morning, Dr. Nicolas Santos, who is joining us on the line to the U.S., and uh, uh, Maitre Alex Ndive, who is also joining us uh, via Skype uh, uh, on the line to uh, U.K., uh, this morning. Good morning, uh, gentlemen, and welcome once again. Good morning, Mr. Lasha Kinsley. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, Mr. Alex Nibir. I uh, hope uh, all of you guys are doing fine. It's been long, yeah, Dr. Good Nick morning. Santos. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Lasha. Good um, morning, good Mr. Morning, Alex. Gladys. Good morning to your entire team and it's a pleasure to see Mr. Dr. Nick Santos on your program. I hope he's going to explain to us how he intends to bring peace. When Mr. Bia haven't got power, he rely on the de facto president. So he must be very powerful to try to bring peace, knowing that France still control our country. So I'll be happy for him to come and explain to us how you are 
hope to achieve that peace when Mr. Bia himself cannot achieve the peace because he gets order from the de facto president of Cameroon, Mr. Macron. Yes, uh, Metro Alex, let's begin vividly with this headline by the Herald Tribune newspaper zooming on. Uh, they just ended a uh, meeting of bishops of uh, the Bamenda Provincial uh, uh, um, Episcopal Conference who met in Boya for over a week and they were talking about uh, pertinent issues in the country, especially in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, where they call on the Bias regime to initiate another fresh dialogue for a return to normalcy in those uh, two English-speaking regions of the country. With Dr. Nicola Santos' initiative, don't you think that uh, this is, uh, it is coming at the right time with more pressure mounting on the Bias regime to initiate a dialogue? Mr. Lasha, it is nice to talk, but we must stop backing to the moon. It is very important that yes, we want dialogue, but what dialogue? Listen, I know, understand the system that operates in Cameroon. When a medical doctor wants to operate a patient, you have to diagnose the illness. I have diagnosed the illness of Cameroon, and I will tell you, France still manufacture our money. France determined the political and social oriental um, um, district of Cameroon by all those things. France had determined Cameroon's educational program. France did do all those things, military assistance or whatsoever. So you have to look at those things first. You cannot go and be knocking Mr. Bia's door that you want to die on. When Mr. Bia himself hasn't got power to do that. You, you saw what happened when they gave us the so-called decentralization. It was not Mr. Bia who gave us, it's President Macron who ordered it. And it's just in paper, because I always like to do comparative studies. When you look, we have decentralization in the UK. What has Scotland got? They have devolved what? Economy, health, education, justice, royal affairs, housing, equal opportunity, consumer advice, transport, taxation. It is devolved. They have a parliament. They have a first minister. That is decentralization. Tell me what they have decentralized in Cameroon. Nothing. So sometimes we have to look. I know Mr. Nick Santos, you say we like to diagnose things. First, if we want peace, you should diagnose the situation, what is happening in Cameroon. It's not about calling the government. Mr. Bia hasn't got that power. It's a fact. The cooperation agreement of 1959 between France and Cameroon is still existing. So how do we stop that? That's the first part of call. If you just go around saying we should make peace, we want to talk. Mr. Bia is hiding it in a duty because he cannot do anything. He knows that he belongs to France. How do we solve that problem first? Mais maître, à vous écouter, on a maître, à vous écouter, on a l'impression qu'on ne peut donc plus apporter euh, ce calme dans le nozo euh, sans toutefois que la France n'ait donné euh, la décision. So, uh, maître, my, let me just add to what Gladys is asking. Why don't we turn uh, to France, go back France, or call on uh, uh, mount pressure we, we on France? We are not going back France. What we intend to do, which I presume. People like Dr. Nick, I'm sure at some point they will come to my port of call. Rather than us stand talking, I've learned from Scotland, Northern Ireland, the Catalans and other things, we should put ourselves to stand as member of parliament and council. And when we get those seats, we have got the mandate. France will not be able to do anything. That's the solution. Okay. Let's be the change that we want to see. If we just talk, we don't put action. We don't put ourselves forward that we want to be those members of parliament and keep the no, do nothing members of parliament in Cameroon and let's be that parliamentarian and we'll tell the government now that we have got the money. Because as things stand, the government say, who are we going to talk to? When we have a mandate, the government won't say, who do we want to talk to? That's what we believe in British Cameroon National Party. And at some point, I'm sure Dr. Nick Santo will join me and I intend to talk to people. Rather than us say peace, it will never work. Okay. We, we are not going to ask, okay, ask permission to be members of parliament. We are not going to ask France. We are going to be those parliamentarians who tell France that this is what we want now. English institution in the English part of Cameroon, French institution in the French part of Cameroon. That okay. is what I stand for. That is what I believe in. And I believe with time, most people in Northwest and Southwest and our French brothers in the other side, they will understand what I'm saying. Doctor. That is the mission and I believe it's workable. Okay, Dr. Nick Santos, you listen to Maitre Alex Ndivede. Uh, you are championing a, an initiative after the very first one that failed, uh, the Ghana Peace Conference that you initiated alongside Dr. Ndongwi. Uh, 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 it didn't work out. Now, now you are talking about another one calling on the government to give you 
uh, the chance to bring people together and talk peace in the northwest and southwest region. How do you intend to achieve this this one? Uh, first of all, Mr. Lasha uh, and fellow panelists uh, and viewers, I'm very glad uh, to be on board today with, with Mr. Alex and uh, Mary Singer, who has been uh, my big brother from childhood, uh, that's my big brother's friend in the days. Uh, we are very close together. Uh, we grew up together. And I think um, I applaud his political stamina because he has been uh, a very uh, heavyweight activist from childhood till this day. And even when uh, this protest began, I think he was leading this pro protest even ahead of myself, the protest for marginalization, the pro pro protest for our identity as Anglophones. And I will applaud him for that. Even in England, in the UK, he, he took his mattress and slept in front of the embassy. One time, I knew about that. And then uh, he was old enough to go to the Grand National Dialogue, and without missing words, he echoed the same concerns he is echoing right now, which I want to salute him for that, for standing very firm to that. But uh, it comes now to the point of um, we are at the phase of looking for medication. A medication, a medication to this problem. Uh, we want to get a treatment problem. And the treatment for this problem is that uh, uh, we have to stay and you know the talk from where the talk uh, last ended at the Grand National Dialogue. I said last time when I came out that we are about to, to write the missing chapters of the Grand National Dialogue. The missing chapters of the Grand National Dialogue is like you write a book. And you see that somewhere it was, it was, it was not it was not an inclusive dialogue. Then you go appealing to the others who were absent, so that they can come and sit and give their opinion about what they felt uh, was missing, so that we can go up that and uh, add in that book, which can be like an addendum or an appendix to that book. So um, I think um, from what Mr. Lesinga is saying is that um, uh, we. we the international community, because if 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 up to this time, within to six years, no international uh, partner has come to side with us in the struggle, it means that uh, as he's saying that we should continue to wait for that United Nations to come. That the United Nations will never come, because let me tell you, and the Security Council, France, as he says, is blocking uh, this issue to be heard, and so. The issue is it's left for us Cameroonians, Cameroonians to see and conclude uh, uh, on what we've done at the Grand National Dialogue. And I think if we are able to have a talk, a talk, having a free talk and a talk, especially with those that they have been asking that they don't know who to talk to. And last time you see, we came up with an initiative of one Cameroon Congress where we, we came up with 83 names of who exactly to talk to. And these names uh, means that these are the persons who did not attend the Grand National Dialogue. That if listening years are given to them, then I think that uh, that would be a, a breakthrough. Because let me tell you, to treat uh, uh, this illness needs to include uh, the absent part of it. Because the absent part of it is the separatists that were not at the Grand National Dialogue. So if we go around, I think. Um, uh, there's going to be some uh, a giant move towards it. And when I talk of the 83 persons, I talk of the separatists in the diaspora, and I talk about the ex combatants and the ex uh, resident leaders from the separatist front, as well as federalists and uh, unionists and those in incarceration. Uh, uh, Dr. 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 Nick, Dr. Nick, what are you going to do with uh, war entrepreneurs? Those who are benefiting from this, this, this issue. We just had another report from one newspaper talking about an ex amber fighter who is at the origin of multiple explosives that were detonated or uncovered in Kumba, Meme Division of the Southwest region. How are you going to achieve those, uh, 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 go over those difficulties? Let me tell you that. Um um, uh, Mr. Lasher, it boils down to the same thing that uh, there are few, you believe in me that from what we have observed, this is more of an economic and economic warfare because there seem to be a lot of people from both fronts 
put in the government and uh, on the secretary side who have decided to be reaping a lot of uh, who are reaping a lot of economic benefits from this. And let me tell you, um, if you want to ask, just ask for yourself, how did those guns that the boys are using, how did they get this gun? How, will, how, how, how did they import this gun? How was it delivered to them? These are the same guns that came into the territory via the military that was bought by some of these guys. Bought or seized by some of these guys. Either bought or seized because they are taking more than the When we start to talk about peace, you discover that the greatest opposition to peace are some collaborators in government who don't want who don't want peace to come because if peace comes, their pockets will be dry and empty. So they pray that the war should continue. Last time I even said that if you point an amber terrorist to be kidnapped by the army, you will be shocked that you yourself will be the first person to be shot because <laughs> they don't want this war. They are making a lot of money from it. Okay, okay. And also, that's all. I will, I will come back. I will come back to you. Let, let me, uh, uh, Metro Alex, you listen to Doctor there, and Doctor did talk about dialogue being a process, and apparently you are seeing your own dialogue from an event perspective. Isn't dialogue supposed to be a process, which Doctor wants to continue with other uh, a good way Cameroonians in looking for the lasting solution to this problem? My point, I'm saying. There is only one person in power, the ruling CPD man, Dr. Nick happened to be in that political party. The ruling CPD political party, they are in power. They have got guns. France is behind them. Tell me why do they want to dialogue with you? You're asking somebody to do what Gorbachev did and lose power? They don't want to. That's a fact. We have to be realistic. I know what I want. I know what I want to fight for. But you have to be realistic. Do they want to talk to you? No. Dr. Nick also made a point about we need an inclusive dialogue. Let me tell you, Dr. Nick Santos, that dialogue was inclusive. I know you'll be surprised why. Everyone was invited. Everyone. We put it, me and Padia Asama, we put it on social media. They were afraid to go there. Everyone. All the Amazonian leaders. They were invited. They did not have that courage because their courage ends on social media. They were afraid that they were going to be arrested. I went there. I was ready to sacrifice my life. I was ready to be arrested. I never bothered about that. So people, when they want to fight for something, they should be ready to die for what they believe in. I was just sitting there. You talk about both sides. To me, there's no both sides. There's a government, despite the fact that political differences with the government. There's only one side. And they will claim that they have won the election, the ruling CPDM party. I don't know why, Dr. Nick, you are part of that party. You cannot discuss peace inside your party, come out with a policy. Normally in the UK, what you are doing outside one Cameroon, you are part of Ambassador, they will sack you because you are not following the policy of the party. You wouldn't be a member of CPD. Automatically, you have sacked yourself because you are going outside party lines. When they want to make party policy, it has to remain inside the CPDM. You have what you believe in. So you should go inside your political party and come out with a solution because that's your political party. And at the end of the day, we talk about, about them, both sides, they're fighting and killing each other. There's a fact that I will tell you, there's only one person in that country or one political party who is responsible to bring peace. And the government, the ruling CPDM government have got a duty to maintain law and order, to enforce laws. To maintain national security. So yes, there are people who are committing crime in Cameroon. There's only one person who should solve that problem. It's the government. It's not both sides. And the government is not doing its function. And that's why I do politics because we believe we are alternative. We are government in waiting. We can replace the CPDM one day and it's true. It's factual. And you can do that only through the ballot box. And when we talk about the international committee, Mr. Nick, you also talk about international committee. Listen, what Ambazonians they were doing, they were repeating what when we were under Saudi Cameroon National Council and Saudi Cameroon Youth League, of which I was the public relations officers in the early 90s. They were doing what we collect signatures. We bandy, power funcha, we collect signatures. We gave it to them. They went to the UN, Pamuna, who they were vice president, prime minister, power funcha, barrister, they went to the UN. The UN told them, no. 
So what the Amazonians have been doing, they have been recycling the same thing that we did in the early 90s. That's why I never joined them, because most of them, they were novice. You cannot be repeating things. If Pamuna, a whole vice president and power for of a country, Barista Ekota Elad and maybe Barista Anyangwe, they went to the UN. So why you spent all these six years repeating the same thing that we did on early 90s? If we would have stood and take the advice that some experienced people told us, form a political party, a minor party, and stand for election, if we would have done that long ago in 1990, there would have been change in the Kama Road. But because some people, they had double standard. Some of them, they were supportive SDF. But many key people, they put a lot of money in SDF now. They did not want a minor party that would solve the anglophone problem. It is a conflict of interest. And that's why SDF has been a problem, because they don't know where they are going to. They follow money. And money is the root of all evil. Okay, Mr. Alex. I'll come back to you, Dr. Nick. Before Gladys asks you uh, her, the question that she, she has for you, can you comment on what... Uh, uh, the other panelists have just said. Um, Mr. Alex, listen there, I will tell you that um, even before I actively engage with the uh, interim government that I later on resigned from, you, will, you, will, you, are, you can bear witness, and everyone can bear witness that when the marginalization crisis began, protest, protest began, you were one of the leaders in England, in the UK. And everybody knows that to the extent that you took your mattress and went and slept in front of the streets or in front of the embassy. So, uh, the same light, in the same light, every, uh, about 70 or 80 percent of English speaking Cameroonians or Anglophone Cameroonians went out for the marginalization, which is not a crime for protested yet. There was a, there, there is an Anglophone problem, yes, but the Anglophone problem was hijacked by Ambazonians because at the early days, we couldn't draw that line, that fine line, between those who were actually continuing the marginalization protest and those who were gangsters, thieves, and scammers, and arm robbers who hijacked the whole thing and transformed it into what we have today. But that, that is clear that some of us had to retrace our steps and belong to where we belong. But the issue is, let me make it clear to you, uh, fighting or advocating for uh, the rights of Anglophones or uh, finding yourself in the extremist push does not stop you from being a member of the political party in Cameroon. From 18 years and above, you have to choose your political party. And that did not also stop people from belonging to their previous political parties because which they are not retired from. You know, when you talk of uh, uh, party excluding some persons, the party, the CPDM, knows that there is a problem in the country. They know that within the CPDM itself, you have the progressives who are young people like us, you know, Dr. Mungin, Wayam, and the others. We are progressives within the CPDM. It doesn't mean that we don't know about what is happening, but we keep on giving suggestions as to how to resolve the issue. That's why the one Cameroon Congress agenda of identifying good topic or who to talk to was proposed by members of the CPDM. Oh, Gladys, let's let's get back to Metro Alex. Uh, Metro Alex. Dr. Nick, avant de, de partir vers euh, euh, Maître Alex, vous avez donné une liste de séparatistes qui doivent être appelés pour ce second dialogue. Euh, la question que je voudrais vous poser, c'est où est-ce que ce dialogue va se tenir? Not an organization, but 
names of individuals to dialogue with, to talk with. And that is the first phase. The second phase comes down to, your, to answer your question of where it's going to take place. There's going to be a free talk. A free talk is like the government engages by making phone calls to these persons individually and talk with them and get their suggestions on where it's appropriate for them to meet to talk and to discuss. Because in the pre talk, they're going to schedule a definite talk. And in that, in that pre talk, they're going to schedule a definite talk or they can schedule a venue for a pre talk. After the pre talk, they can decide to uh, schedule a venue for the final talk. The final talk can still take place in Cameroon. I know that most people hmm. will say that. Wait, um, I, have a, I have a show and the yeah. rest coming. <laughs> Do you think their security uh, is, is guaranteed? For everyone there, somebody in this question to come out. The issue is they can work out that in the free talk. If there is good faith, for example, if the prisoners in jail are supposed to attend a free talk or a definite talk, and the government begins by showing good faith of releasing them so as to prepare for that talk and also give them amnesty and make some guarantees in the presence of the third party, I think all of them will be able to take about Trying to come out the problem. The problem is what are the guarantees that they will not be arrested? What are the safeguards and who is the guarantor of such an agreement? Okay. 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 Yeah, donc, Maître Alex, parlons à présent euh, des prochaines élections présidentielles au Cameroun. Plus, plus, il ne manque plus qu'une semaine pour s'inscrire sur les listes électorales. Est-ce que vous pensez au jour d'aujourd'hui que les Camerounais euh, sont encore motivés euh, à peut-être s'inscrire sur les listes électorales Alors, au regard de tout ce, qui, tout ce bourra politique que nous, avons, nous observons dernièrement Yes, before I answer your question, I will say somebody is talking about that there was international warrant um, to arrest um, most of these um, separatists abroad. I should tell you, it's not true. Let me tell you. In the letter, they invited everyone to come there was an amnesty. It's because most of them, they were cowards, they were afraid. And if you are not a coward, we should distinguish between criminality and political opinion. The Constitution of Cameroon allows people to have political opinion. Separation is a political opinion. What people have been doing, they have been abducting people. That's not fighting for Anglophone. Kidnapping for ransom, that's not fighting for Anglophone. Rape people, lockdown, which is a war crime, that's not fighting for Anglophone. The reason I went to Cameroon, I was not scared. Before I do something, I know what the law says. What are people say, oh, you bought a flag, the law says in this country it's not a crime, it's your personal property. So people have been doing things without knowing what the law says. That's their problem. I'm not scared of the government of Cameroon to arrest me. They arrest me, they put me down, say, bring what I've done, tell me what's my crime. But a lot of people have come and confessed on social media, I killed this, um, is it the um, ex-colonel delay? You kill people, civilians, then you're scared to go to Cameroon. I, Metro Mola Alex Diveli Singer, I will never forgive anyone who has killed civilian. If Mr. Bia forgive you, I will not forgive you. They killed Chief Banda, kidnapped um, 11 Bakure Chief. They killed the head of Sakwe. What has Sakwe got to do with Anglophone fight? Those who have killed people will never have amnesty. If Mr. Bia gives you amnesty, we, the people of the Cameroons, will not give you that amnesty because you have killed our people. You must pay for that. Mr. Bia does not own people. Justice is being done for the people of the Cameroons, not for Mr. Bia. Mr. Bia can pardon you, but the people of the Cameroons will never pardon any person. We saw what happened, kidnapping um, or whatsoever. Who asked you to kidnap people? Are you going to bring those people back? No. Mr. Bia will pardon you, but the people of the Cameroons will never pardon any person who has individual. They will never pardon any person who has committed a war crime. It is very important that we know this. It is very important, and I will never, personally, once you take a human life, I will never pardon you. Even those people who are in the GTR, some of them have self-confessed, they kill people there, they will pay for it. If you go and fight paramilitary against the government of Cameroon military, that's a different thing. When you go around harassing people, individual, civilians, the war crime, is stated it clear. Civilians are not part of your war. Lockdown is a criminal, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a war crime. But they don't know that. They keep on saying that lockdown is a, it's civil unrest. If you ask people, 
Normal people that civil unrest or protest, they do that willingly. That's not a war crime. It's very important. And I'll come back again to what you said, Mr. Nick. It's very important, Dr. Nick, because you are talking about peace talk. I'm talking out of experience. This thing you have to solve it is a political problem. If you say you want to meet people in and talk about them, who have given you that right? A CPD and parliamentary will say, I was voted. Who voted for you people to come and talk on behalf of people? We have seen that. Scotland, the minority, they had problem. Some people created Scottish National Party. Today, they have devolution. They are running Scotland. We have seen Sean Fay in Northern Ireland. They had problems. They have been having wars and war terrorism for how many years? They had what they call power sharing agreement. They have Sean Fay party. The Flemish, the Flemish, they are minority in Belgium. They use political party. The Catalans, they use political party. Quebec political party. And you have to have the mandate. You have to, somebody have to vote for you. We can, I cannot just sit here. I want to speak on behalf of um, um, Anglophone, who are giving me that mandate. The only way to get the mandate is to stand for election. Go back to your point, Gladys. It's very important. You talk about election. I'm here to give you um, the registration. I'm looking for alternative. Part of this um, registration is a way to steal election or to rig election. To me, our party, what we believe in British Cameroon National Party, election should be compulsory. Registration should be compulsory, rather. Everybody should be registered. This thing that they come, oh, it's closing down, then they keep it up. It's a way to control the voters. You should make it, I don't know whether it's 18 years or 21 in Cameroon. It should be compulsory. We need to see more than 15 million people registered. We don't want to see a country that 2 million people will vote for Mr. Bia. It tells you that Mr. Bia is not a legitimate president. Not up to 50% of the population voted for him. We, our policy is that um, registration should be compulsory. Automatically, you are a Cameroonian, everybody, you are automatically register. We don't need to come every year, we need to register people. That is my, that is a way to stop the corruption or rigging elections. Okay, thank you, Metro Alex. Thank you for coming. And we, let's have the last words of Dr. Nick before we uh, quit today's uh, program. Dr. Nick, you listen to him. Your last words to televiewers who are watching us. Yeah, um, I've a couple of words and I, I understand that uh, this process uh, will all end in Cameroon through the ballot box because no matter what is happening now, uh, we should begin to realize that there is no way, uh, even if you are Anglophone, you are Francophone, you are whatsoever, as a Cameroonian, you must express your opinion only through the power of the battle box. And that's why I keep on telling all my brothers and sisters that uh, in spite of what organizations or tribal groups or whatsoever that you belong to, try to get yourself in a political party. Mr. Alex, in fact, the major Alex has an alternative to you because it's party that is coming up, uh, which I still have to read the manifesto of the party. And then um, also to encourage people that uh, they should consider party supreme because that's only the only uh, channel through which you can express your genuine power and make effective change in Cameroon. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you to Televiewers on my media, Prime Television, for watching this other edition of the program which was produced for us by Christian Tebon. We were Gladys Bomotongina and myself, Lasha Kingsley. See you tomorrow for yet another edition of what uh, our papers in Cameroon must have carried. Bye-bye.